Hello guys, welcome back to Tax Riders and another episode of the Finite Element Modeling series. In this video, back to programs with graphical user interfaces, we want to solve the transient heat transfer problem in Code Aster. Let's go for it. Yeah, Code Aster, but uh, I said code aster is a graphical user interface, an application with graphical user interface, which is not correct because code aster is actually an engine, let's say a solver, but it is very nicely integrated with Salumi platform. So you can use it similar to, for example, ANSYS Workbench. You can use it to set up the simulations. And in this case, the, the name of the software is Salumi Mecha. So Salumi Mecha is actually Salumi platform integrated with Codaster. But Codaster itself is an amazing, a very powerful solid mechanics uh, solver for finite element analysis, very similar to Abacus. The capabilities are similar to Abacus. Let me show you. I would say a little bit better, but uh, still, uh, you know, Codaster has a big problem actually and the problem is uh you know it's not for the documentation it's well documented but there are when you face a, if an error message the error message is usually written in french and sometimes you see that for example uh, because it's as a french software as you can see also for cookies it's also written in french so generally you will say you will face a lot of things written in french I won't say more than 50%, there are less than 50% with some points, that's actually one of the drawbacks of Codaster, let me say it in advance. But apart from that, Codaster is amazing, is an amazing solver, and let me show you the features it has. And uh, a solver that, you know, provides users with a lot of uh, features. But as I said, uh, I don't know why the the website doesn't work quite well today, but yeah. So uh, yeah, this is, for example, the presentation that provides, that presents the features that Code Aster has. But generally, if you have a, have a look at the features that it provides, the material models, the different types of solvers, you will see that, yeah, it's quite nice. You see that it provides mechanical and thermal as well as some, you know, multi-physics stuff and analysis types, multiple analysis type stuff, and the things that you can couple simulations, model analysis, and, uh, you know, various material models. Uh, I will, in the next video, when I want to summarize all the things that we discussed so far, I will talk about material models more in details because Codacer has actually it's not part of Codaster, but a project that is developed mainly to be coupled with Codaster provides a very nice user interface, a very nice, I would say, programming uh, APIs uh, uh, for uh, dealing with actually for creating new material models. So the platform is quite rich, also for people using you know really advanced material models and multi physics stuff. So this is a solver that we want to use for a very simple simulation. In this case, is uh, actually the, the heat transfer inside the helical shape. And since uh, we built this geometry in Salumi in the second episode of this series, now uh, in the end we want to go back to Salumi again and solve it with a software that is well integrated in Salome. Code Aster, now it is called Salome Mecha. So let me run Salome Mecha. It's actually very easy to install, so installation is very similar to uh, the environment in Salome. I wanted to say that, uh, that the installation is very similar to uh, Salome itself, so you just need to download the binaries and uh, then uh, run the, the in, in this case you can run the installer but you can also get grab the binaries and decompress the, the zip file and run the program so you can see that this is the download files for the download section for code aster itself so you can download just the, the engine as you can see the size is not big just the solver 
uh, similar to Elmer, I told you for Elmer, Elmer is a user interface, is, is, is a, actually a graphical user interface on top of a behind the scenes solver. And in this case, the behind the scenes solver is Codaster, but the interface is Salome Mecha. And for Salome Mecha, you will see that it has, uh, you know, recent versions for like this container services, but also for the universal installer that does nothing but copying the files to the desired directory, to the directory that you select. Okay, now we have uh, Salome Mecca here. Uh, I have already installed it because the, the, the download size is quite big. So I open a file on the desktop, you saw it here. It's the HDF file for the Salome that we created in the second episode. And I go to the desktop and open this one. Similar to the video of Elmer, you can see that this is, uh, you know, actually the environment, more modules actually integrated, but the module that is very important for us is Aster Study, which is actually the, the environment in which we can set up or code Aster simulation. But let me go to the module, to the, the, the geometry module first. And here you see that, uh, yeah, we have the, the spring here, but Similar to what we did in the Elmer simulation, because these, uh, this geometry is quite big. You can see it, you know, this is, you know, I don't know. I've done it several times in different videos showing that how you can get the size of any object in the geometry module using this bonding box feature. This is quite big uh, geometry, as you can see, and these are actually meters, so this is a way that we, we built this for Freefam Phoenix. There are really dimensionless solvers, but in this case, the, the dimension, the units matter. So we need to resize this one in, in the, uh, so the resize, the rescaling is this one. So in the Elmer video, we scale it to the factor of one uh, thousandth. And we want to do the same here. So with this spring object, we scale it to, to this, apply and close, and it becomes very small, as you can see, it's just here. And now this is the shape, and I hope, uh, oh no, the, the groups are not created, so we need to create the groups again. So I create the groups very fast. So here, this one is the input. I add it, so it's just called in and oops sorry uh so i click apply and this one is of the wall apply and this one was the outlet i will say out apply and close so now we have these groups here this is the outlet this is the wall and this is the inlet so now we can perform our simulation on a scale one or if we can generate uh, or mesh on the scale one geometry after we have scaled the, the spring so now we go back we go to the mesh module because we need to generate mesh on this one we can clear the previous mesh uh, this is the mesh for the bigger part. So I delete a clear mesh data or I can delete it, I clear the mesh data and then delete it to save this is disk space. And then I select scale one and I create a mesh on it. So I select tetrahedral, although Codaster is capable of handling various types. Still, I still use tetrahedral. So these settings here, I create you know, a typical settings for, for that. So this size is probably, we need to change this one to smaller size according to the experience that we had before. So I uh, choose a smaller value. You know, this is the value that we changed in the, in the, in the episode that we wanted to create this geometry. So apply and close, and then now we are ready to compute the mesh. After the mesh is ready, we can proceed to to the code uh, to the Aster study module, and that's where you know you will see that how code Aster is integrated in Salome uh, Mecha. So we need to wait a little bit, and yeah, this this is uh, now the mesh is ready, and uh, it's not bad, although. I don't know, I would have preferred it to be 
a little bit finer, but that, that's fine. That's fine. For now, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. So let's go on with this. It's okay. And then if we find it a problem, the mesh size a problem, we can come back and, and modify it. So I saved this file and uh, we could have saved it as a inside a directory because it's because it, now it starts to generate a couple of files, but that's fine. Now it writes them to the desktop folder. But it's a uh, good practice to put the file inside another folder, another directory, because uh, the results files and the setup of the, the, the Codaster setup files, they are really scattered, sort of. So now I go to the Aster study uh, module, and here is uh, where the story begins. So it says that it choose the version of Codaster you want to use. It's, it's yeah, probably want to go for the stable one. And this is the environment. So uh, what we need to do here is actually we need to create a new stage and then follow the steps here that there are mesh and then defining the model, defining the materials, defining the list if it is a transient uh, simulation or any kind of functions and lists, boundary conditions and initial conditions, pre-analysis, the, the, the analysis itself and then post processes and setup of output and fracture mechanics if, if applicable. But, you know, something because generally to I told you the big disadvantage of Codacer the French stuff, here also in the user interface you will face those French stuff. So it's always better that you go and set up a, a stage by using this assistant. And this assistant actually, actually set up a simulation for you for all these steps. And what you need to do is just modifying them. And it saves also a lot of time. It's not necessarily related to the French user interface, but it is also it saves a lot of time. And for doing that, now I, I will do that once with a linear terminal analysis that is just, you know, a simple analysis, but it is a steady state. And then I modify it to be like a, a transient analysis, which is the analysis that term a mechanical analysis creates. So let me create a new analysis. First one, a steady state, although we want the simulation to be transient, but I start with a linear steady state which is simpler to set up and then I make it transient. So it says that yeah this is what the wizard is going to do. Mesh one which is uh, I hope that it was created on the scaled version. Yes it was. And then I go on it says the kind of model that you want to perform and the terminal condu conductivity this is very important. Now we have scaled the mesh so we can choose a value that is a default one. It's, it's okay for now. And then it says impose temperature and groups. So I add a new one and then groups for the group, we should be able to select the groups that we have. Apparently I cannot, I don't know why. Oh, because I forgot to, to create the groups. Yes, this is a, a, a older, an older version of Salome, sorry. This is very important to create the groups on a mesh. And apparently the mesh doesn't have the groups, yes, because this is an older version. Okay, so now we should open this uh, these groups here. And on mesh, I will select uh, create groups from geometry. And I select this tree from the scaled one. So this tree applying close. And now the mesh should have that, those groups. So I go back to the group, uh, to the Aster study and now stage with, uh, add stage with assistance. So linear thermal, mesh one, 3D, this is thermal conductivity. And now I should be able to select the things that I wanted, that I want, sorry. So inlet, I press okay. Inlet temperature is 293 plus 20. This is in Kelvin. And then also for the outlet, which is minus 20, 253. This is the way that we set it up on, in, in previous uh, episodes. But you can see that, you know, it, it doesn't matter which interface, which program it is, they are very simple. So this is it, the, the typical steps that we took to set it up in, in Elmer, in an, another program with user interface.
So I press yes. I do want to stream normal to the face. Uh, no, because it is actually zero. And do want a volume source. No, still it is zero for us. And I specify the output result file. And this is where I can uh, create a new directory probably for that on the desktop. So let's say it's the results. And then here I will write, uh, I will name it as steady. So these are the output files and I create finish. And as you can see now Elmer, uh, sorry, uh, Code Aster, in this case Salumi Mecca has created these steps for me. And these are the things that I should have done manually using the steps here. So as you can see, it's there. Some of them are really <laughs> in French. So I, that, that's why I said, although they are, yeah, very well described in the user manual, but it's uh, always easier to set up a simulation from using the wizard, using the assistance. So, uh, but I, I'll show you here that when you, for example, instead of here, it says that it was this or uh, this operation that it is, I don't know, Lear something really, Milage, something. Uh, you define this and then here you need to select the format and select the mesh. So by double clicking on any step on any of these steps in this, uh, in this tree, in the, in the stage explorer, in this case, case view, this is how it's called. You can see the steps here, the way that is defined here. So as you can see, it's mesh one here and then the format is met for the model. This is again, you say that, yeah, this is the model, select that one from the uh, the mesh that we defined. I think there was something here to translate some of them to English, yes. At least some of them, not these ones, but these are, this, you know, by enabling this, you can have some of the items, most of the items in, in English. So uh, this is the model definition and then the material, which is a very important stage. You can see that these are uh, the different types of materials that we can use to define this. And this is the thermal material uh, type and the linear thermal analysis elastics. Lambda is actually the, in this case, uh, thermal diffusivity or the co coefficient, diffusion coefficient that we wanted to have. We define this one and then we assign the material to, to the model. So we say that this is the material that we had, the material we defined, we assign it to the mesh, to the model actually that we had. And then for the boundary conditions, we have, we had two boundary conditions. There are different types of boundary conditions that we can use. And these are actually, you know, two groups, the group one inlet temperature is defined here. And this is for the group outlet. So you can see how, uh, easy it was to use the, 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 the wizard actually to create this. And then for the analysis, you know, these are the things we will later on, we will select these two because uh, we want to have an initial condition and uh, yeah, initial, sorry, initial condition and time stepping. Uh, when we want to go for the for the transient simulation, but this is actually the way that it's defined. You define the load, the material field and the model. So all the three previous steps that we defined. And then for the output, this is the output and the results are, this is the results at the temperature. The temperature field is written as the results. So this is actually where you can also define the parallelization and all, all those things, various solver settings. I told you, if you had a look, have a look at the, the code aster documentation, you see that it's actually an endless list of parameters that you can define and can change. You will have full control on things and you can add your own stuff to the source code. I, I think code aster is written in Fortran, but you can add your own plugins and, uh, have uh, anything you want it. Uh, actually, it's more extensible, easy, the extensibility is easier than commercial codes less, like Abacus or ANSYS. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it. So this is the output that will be written here. And then we go to the history view. And here we create, uh, we select the current case and we add a new stage to that. And by clicking on this, now we have this run button, uh, button enabled. So I click on this one, probably need to save it before. And then I click run. And now it starts to run.
I sent it. I can see the progress of uh, of the solution here. So I should select the graph size and auto refresh. No, auto refresh every five seconds. And this is actually already done because that was a steady state solution. And as you can see here, that's what I told you that uh, things are French, unfortunately. But yeah. So. Uh, now we, we can go back to the case study and here we will have like the results that are here for us. I, you know, I selected an output and I selected this one and now I can select open in Paravis, which is actually the Paraview, a version of Paraview, Paraview that is embedded inside Salome Mecca. So I click on this one, open in Paravis. So you know this the user interface. This is part of you, as we all know, and these are the actually the output, which is quite in a steady state. Both fronts reaching exactly in the middle, and uh, this is quite nice. The way that you you see how you saw how easy it was to set up this simulation. But now let's convert it back to to the way that we set it up in previous uh, episodes. That we solved this problem. That was they were actually. Uh, transient, but setting up a transient simulation is also easy here. That uh, the only thing that we need to change. So we go back to the aster study, and here the only thing that we need to change is actually defining a list for time steps. Oops, sorry, defining a list for the time steps, which are here. We can define a list. And then based on a list, we can define the time steps that we wanted to solve. And that's as easy as it. And um, then we convert this transient solution to, sorry, the steady state model to a transient one. But again, because we don't, I just want to show you how you can use that assistance ship to do the assistance provided with, uh, provided by Salome Mecca to set up a simulation. I will set up it, set it up again from scratch this time with the with transient solver so i delete this stage that was for the steady state and then i add stage with assistance but this time it, i need to add a thermal mechanical there is no thermal let's say uh, transient thermal i will use thermal mechanical and then i remove all the mechanical analysis stuff later on so I press next, it says a mesh one, 3D, and this is thermal conductivity and a young modulus Poisson ratio. These are the things that I will remove later. And thermal expansion, I think this should be a number. I'm not, I'm not sure oh, I, if I can leave it as zero or not. You know, this is one of the things that probably can be a source of the problem if I do not define it. But uh, yeah, let's go and see what happens. But I think for a transient simulation, we need to set up this thermal expansion coefficient. Let's put it at one for now. And then here is a thermomechanical impulse temperature in the groups. We do what we did in the transient, in the sorry, steady state simulation. So two. Uh, 293 for the inlet and 253 for the outlet. As simple as that. I press OK. I, next, sorry, nothing on the interfaces, no volume source. And now here, initial temperature is 273, is zero in the centigrade uh, scale. I press enter and uh, time steps. This is uh, this is you know this is what we had to define. So for now I just enter something very stupid, but later on I will go and edit it. So this is now for the mechanical model definition. So still I need to edit some stuff, otherwise it doesn't let me go on. I will remove all these things later. So I really don't care what I define here. So next I think still it doesn't let me go on without defining this. I define this one again here and then next specify the output so I go here to the desktop and then results but this time I will specify like uh, transient press save and finish so now you can see that the tree uh, is actually uh, bigger this time but the mesh is the same uh, here we have model thermal which is the thermal analysis for for the thermal model 
but it is, it is used for the mechanical analysis because if we need to define the type of the analysis that we want to have here, you see again English, please, and mechanics, acoustics, and thermic. I will cancel it and then I remove this one because I don't need this. Probably some of them become red because uh, you know they, they are dependent on that one. It doesn't matter. But then here uh, we go for the list. This is something that we want to modify later. Let's go on first. Mm, try to fix the problems. So here we have the mechanical boundary conditions. We don't need them. Uh, but actually we need the thermal uh, analysis. So I should make sure this is the mechanical mm, that the pressure. So where this uh, the boundary conditions of the, yeah, this is probably this one. Yes, the temperature is defined here. So this is for for the thermal one and these two for the mechanical one. So I can easily remove these two, the one for the pressure, one for the fixed boundary condition that I applied. And then for the material, there is uh, the mesh and the model is this one actually. And then the material as, uh, you know, for everywhere, that's, that's true. And then I click OK. So this one becomes also black. And I can safely remove this one, this analysis, because, uh, you know, I have already defined the thermal, uh, thermal analysis here. So, yeah, this is the thermal analysis, the material and the model and the loads which is actually this one. And this one uh, is already something useless for us because we don't need mechanical analysis and we can remove it from here. And then the output, we need to define the output. Probably one of them are not is not necessary anymore, which is this mechanical analysis again. I remove this one and the type of, uh, you can see the type of solution is transient. I click OK, so now they are all black, nothing red. And I want to go back to the way that it's defined. It was defined, as I told you, in the steady state simulation. This is, you know, you can see define list real. This one, which brings us a, a user interface like this. And now instead of value of zero and one, we want to have like something that starts with zero. And then we define the interval. So from zero until like 20, we can define the number of steps or the steps length. So it's, it is really something we have already discussed. But uh, for, you know, for a space, for a spatial terms, we use finite element formulation. And for temporal terms, we use finite difference. And this is actually the temporal term because it is the number of steps, time steps in for time let's say temporal terms. So we say until 12, 20 from zero until 20 in step lengths, uh, one tenth. And then I click OK. And now it is switched to this one, which is the, the standard notation of uh, code aster for, for lists that has, you know, the starts from zero and goes to 20. And I press OK. Mm, and that's it. I think now we are ready for our transient simulation to go. So now we go to the history view and here I select this one and, uh, oh, sorry, I should select, this is the previous uh, stage, previous case that we run. And then here current stage, I press plus here to add a new stage, uh, a new case, let's say, and then I press run. It starts to run. Uh, now the auto refresh is five seconds. Now some output should appear now. Let's see what happens. You can press refresh. Oh, it was appeared. Then I press refresh. Uh, now code aster restarts to yeah solves things for each time step. You can see that already 140 time steps are uh, are solved but we have 200 uh, time steps actually. And now it is done all the time steps. As you, can, as you saw, it was also quite fast because in this case, the mesh is quite coarse. And we go back to the case view and we select the output and this is the transient name that I chose for the files. And then again, open in Paravis and this, this is the output for the results of the temperature. 
Uh, this is st still steady and let's see if it runs this time, if everything is correct. So now I should have the controls here. I press run and nothing happens. So this is, uh, you know, nothing happened here. And I told you there is one thing that we needed to check. And that was actually the thermal expansion. I think we, in the end, we put it zero. We put a zero there. But uh, let's go back and, oh, there's an error here. And it doesn't matter. So let's go back and uh, check it. Check uh, the value that we entered there and try to see if that was the source of the problem. And you will see how easy it is to modify the files, the models in uh, Code Aster. So, uh, now we have it uh, here and then it was the materials. So the materials defined here, you can see that it is elastic, linear, isotropic, elastic. We don't really need this one. And internal expansion, is it defined here? I don't think so. No, no, no. Thermal expansion is defined here. So I, re I, I deselect this one. This is not required. This is for mechanical material. I press OK. And then I go to this thermal conductivity, thermal conduction material. And you can see the isotropic heat capacity is zero here. So I specify something big for it just to see if uh, if it is okay if it is the source of the problem usually it is you know I told you when when we wanted to specify it in the wizard I told you that it should that, uh, it's really something uh, that uh, you need to pay attention to so now I think we are uh, ready again to go back to the analysis and perform another analysis. So I press current case again, another uh, another uh, uh, case. I don't know why my the user interface has become like this for me. Yeah, now everything is in uh, in in the zone visibility zone, let's say, and then. Uh, yeah, it is also I can specify the number of cores and all these settings. You know, Codaster is also quite efficient on for Perl computing stuff. So I press run, and now it starts to run uh, the solver again for around 200 iterations, 200 time steps, and the and in the end we will see what happens. So now I go back to the case view, and here on the transient. This is, this is a results and open in Paravis. And let's see what has happened this time on this. So again, I don't see, I don't know if the problem is because we are storing it. Yeah, something is happening there, as you can see. And this time at least something appeared, but it is not what we want. But yeah, so there is a, still a problem somewhere. It doesn't matter, you know, model debugging is, is, is as important as model construction or model setup, if not more important. And uh, to me, it's really like, uh, yeah, I have made a mistake on the boundary conditions because, you know, now I can see that the heat is actually diffusing from the boundary to the middle on this on this uh, phase. So I think I've made a mistake somewhere on the boundary conditions. Uh, let's go back and change the boundary condition. So I go back to the Aster study, to the case view here, and then uh, here on the load. Uh, so these are the models and these are the two items. The first one is input 293. Let me resize it again. Yeah, 293, it's, it's okay. And then this one on a, oh, wow. So that's the mistake. That's a big mistake that I've made. You can see I have applied the outlet boundary conditions on a wall. So sorry for that, but yeah. At least we saw that the, the steps that we can take to debug a model 
So the problem were two, actually, that was the wall first and the thermal expansion stuff. That was also a problem because initially we didn't have any heat transfer without that, uh, the row CP defined for the thermal analysis, for the transient thermal analysis inside Salome. But yeah, now we have modified this one. I click OK, OK again. And let's see if for the third time, and this is actually for the fourth time in total, we have everything correct. So I press a new case and now I run it. Let's see if it solves the problem. Cool. And let's go to the case view under results, transient. And let's see this time we have solved the problem or not. Yes. So that was a problem with boundary conditions. That's for the third time, the mistake was actually the boundary conditions. I made a mistake to select wall for the boundary condition and now everything is set and a very nice uh, diffusion you can see here they're moving towards each other and it's quite slow because uh, the, the diffusion uh, coefficient was a slow but you can see that how easy it was it was really easy and also you know all the, the user interface is a little bit scary but at the same time it's there are not so many options on a tree at least that you have set up a simulation, but it doesn't work. And so you can just, you need to go there and check the steps and try to, to try to modify the options and then come back and rerun the simulation to see which one results to uh, actually uh, correct uh, output. So yeah, that's it. And uh, this is the simulation output in Code Aster. I hope you find this uh, video useful. Although the debugging took some time, but I think, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's worth it, I think. Yeah, uh, so um, try to do this yourself in this, I, I told you, a little bit untidy user interface of Salumi Mecha, but it's still the power behind is something that uh, is uh, really, is more important than this user interface. So yeah, have fun and see you in next videos. Bye.